Hey guys, Teresa here. Welcome back to my channel, Lost My Thread. Today I'm going to be showing with you all the sewing goodies that I got this Christmas. It was kind of a bumper year for Christmas gifts for me for sewing related items. I did put most of these on my wish list, so that's where they came from. But I've been sewing for over 20 years now, so there's probably not a huge amount of things that I've never had before. Some of these are upgrades, some of these are new to me, and I thought some of you might like to see what I got. So I might start with the books. I got a few books, had some good recommendations as well, so thank you if you did give me a recommendation. This first one is called The Golden Thread. So this is actually a nonfiction book. It is all about the history of textiles, fiber, even thinking about things like rope and yarn that we've been using throughout human history, really. So this talks all about how fabric and fiber and textiles have been used throughout our history. I think it's gonna be super interesting. I'm really looking forward to it. I've had a little flip through and from what I can see, it looks really cool. If it does turn out as good as I'm hoping, I'll probably tell you a little bit more about it later, but that's a really fun one that I got. I also got a really cool one called the All New Fabric Savvy. So this is basically, it's like a reference book for fabric. So every so often I might buy a type of fabric that I've never used before, or even like consider, do I wanna buy this fabric that I've never used before? And it takes a lot of trial and error figuring out the right kind of needle, the right stitch length, how to care for all those things. And this is basically like an amazing reference book, kind of like an encyclopedia of fabric, where you can just flip through to whatever it is that you're thinking of working with. For example, I've just opened to a random page and we've got leather here. So if I was gonna work with leather for the first time, never having done it before, it tells me facts about it, what it's suitable for, so what kinds of things you can use to make it with, general tips, whether to pre-shrink it or not, how to mark it so it will mark well on that kind of fabric. It will tell you what type of interfacing will work well with that kind of fabric, what sewing machine needle stitch length, what type of presser foot to use, the way to finish it well, how to press it, top stitch it. I mean, basically it's, it just tells you everything you might need to sit and play and mess around with without having to go through all that extra hassle. So this is gonna be so useful and I'm really excited to actually try it with a few fabrics. Some that I've used before, you know, fabrics that I've worked with, but hadn't actually necessarily gotten as perfectly neatly as I could have. So I think that would be a really cool reference book and I am excited to see how much I use it. I also got a book which is not a new book, but it's a new to me book, which is Breaking the Pattern. So this is made by the girls who have named clothing the sewing pattern company and it's got really cool kind of Scandinavian design they are Scandinavian lots of really kind of simple lines um, very not too not too busy not too fussy and I will say that when I was trying to figure out sewing pattern books to buy because this one does come with sewing patterns in it I wasn't too sure what would have patterns that I would use regularly I didn't want to buy something that I'm just gonna you know make one thing out of and then I've paid for a whole book and I haven't actually gotten my money's worth. Something that is interesting about this book that I like about this book is they really encourage you to adapt and hack and change up the patterns that they make and they give you some good suggestions for that which is always going to kind of give you a little bit more value for money basically. But I think as well that one in particular what really drew me to it and what I really loved about it was when I actually looked at the hashtags for a lot of the patterns. So I'm gonna put a link, some links in the description box about the things that I bought, but I will also give you some links to the hashtags on Instagram for the specific patterns from that book. Because in the book, of course, it's not always gonna be the same size and shape models as you are yourself. They are generally quite slim and tall models, not particularly curvy on the whole. So I feel like it was difficult to actually imagine those patterns on my body. And when I looked at the hashtags, there was some really incredible looking things. So you do have some really interesting designs in there. I would say overall fairly simple, but all with a little bit of an interesting twist and you know, different kind of style lines things aren't necessarily cut in the typical way. I think it'll be some really cool, unique things and I'm very excited to make something from there. I will say the first thing I'm probably gonna make, maybe the first thing, is a blouse. And I've actually got some fabric as one of my gifts I'm hoping to use for that blouse, so I'm hoping it turns out really well. The next one I'm gonna tell you about is probably a bit of a weird gift and I will say when my mom 
gave this to me and I opened it, she was questioning whether I really wanted this. And I was probably the most excited, maybe not the most, but up there with how excited I was about this present. And it is a little teeny tiny vacuum cleaner, a little tiny Hoover. Now, the reason I wanted this, if you cannot figure it out yourself, is because I'm gonna use it to clean out my sewing machines. So I am intending at some point to have like a really nice day where I take them open, you know, oil them, clean them, basically make them really lovely and brand new. I am not the best at sewing machine maintenance. I know some people are really good and do it really regularly. I don't do it a whole heck of a lot, but I think this is gonna make it a lot more appealing and a lot more fun because I'm a bit of a dork and I can really enjoy really getting into the nitty gritty with the cleaning it out. One of the things that you know with cleaning sewing machines or you should do if you don't know, you don't wanna shove the dust particles, everything back in. You really wanna pull things out and that's where the little tiny Hoover comes in. So you can charge this with a little USB though it does have some battery so you can also just use charge. It is like a little gun basically. So there's a little button on the back where you turn it on and off. It's got these cute little attachments. Let me put this down so I can show you. There's these two, like, like a vacuum cleaner, like classic Hoover attachments, which are just so cute. So that is gonna be a very dorky, fun afternoon at some point where I'm gonna sit, clean out my machines, have a really nice, good feeling of everything being fresh and hopefully do it a little bit more often. We'll see. I think having a gadget is definitely gonna make it more appealing for me at least. Um, one other thing that I got is a little surprise I got from my niece. It is a wrist pin cushion. So I've actually never had a wrist pin cushion. It, she also gave me some really cute little uh, flower head pins, which are adorable. It's a whole pack of them, but I just put a few in there to show you. Um, I am a pin in the mouth person and I am trying to kick the habit of putting pins in my mouth. But the thing is when you're sewing and you've got stuff really you know, close that you're trying to deal with and pin and maybe hand stitch and take the pins out, it's so simple and easy just to, you know, have the pin in your mouth so nearby that you can just grab it easily. And I know that's really bad and I know that there are people who have swallowed pins and I don't want to be one of those people. And I'm hoping maybe this little wrist pin cushion will be nearby enough that I can feel like I don't need to go for the mouth. I've been better than I used to. I've been making an effort to do it, but this might just make it a little bit easier. But it was such a cute little extra from my eight-year-old niece. She just, I don't know if she went with her mom to a haberdashery store or whatever, but they picked it out and I thought it was super sweet and she was very excited to give it to me. So that was a nice little surprise. I've got a few little Notions haberdashery items as well. So this is a little pair of Fiskars brand tiny snips. Fiskars, I do have probably this is my second pair of Fisker scissors. There's lots of really, really great fabric scissors out there. I do like these ones. They're not overly expensive and I just wanted a really nice new pair of tiny snips. I do have old scissors, tons of them, but like I said, I've been sewing for a while. I don't always replace these items as often as I should. And when I'm trying to cut into things like maybe um, the curves of a shoulder or something like that, when I'm trying to um, reduce bulk, when I'm trying to um, trying to think what I'm trying, I'm trying to think of the words to say, but basically, um, cut in after I've stitched the seam in place just to allow it to sit more easily. I feel like not having really sharp scissors makes it so much more difficult and so much more risky. I can't just get the tip of the scissors where I want to cut. I end up having to put the depth of the scissors, scissors further in and then hope that I stop cutting at the right point when I've got less sharp scissors. So it's, it's a nice little extra to have. On the scissor front, I have also gotten myself a pair of these duckbill scissors. Oop probably easier to show you that way around. So they basically look like a, a, a stork really, I guess I would say. Um, they call them duckbill scissors. They're also called, uh, um, I think they're, do I wanna say embroidery? Um, applique scissors apparently they're called. So you can look for either when you're searching online for them. These are really fantastic for trimming away when you're trying to grade seams or when you're just trying to cut away extra bulk in a seam. What is great about these is you can use this kind of rounded end, this, this bigger bit of the duckbill scissors, 
to make sure that the main part of the fabric is staying away if you just want to trim the seam. And I have definitely had issues before where I've been trying to just trim away the excess fabric and accidentally cut into the main fabric. And I have used this on a project and it makes a big difference. It makes it so much more easier for me to just cut the bit that I want to and the tip of the scissors, sharp tip of the scissors, isn't gonna sneak into the main body of it. So that's a little fun one to have that I feel like I really probably should have gotten earlier. I also got this little tiny cute rotary cutter. So I do have other rotary cutters, but I don't have a small one. And when you're trying to cut out little tight curves, so like sometimes a neckline or um, an arm side or even like the sleeve head, sometimes when you're trying to cut around a curve with a rotary scissor, rotary cutter, which is my preference of how I cut out my patterns, it's, it's difficult to get a tight turning circle and it ends up being a little bit more of a jagged around that area and I often just end up going back to my scissors to trim around it but it kind of seems a bit pointless when I'm using scissors half the time rotary cutter half the time and I realized if I got a small rotary cutter that would be perfect for those little tiny bits of the curves I have heard these are also really great for if you're thinking about doing underwear lingerie that kind of thing which I'm not currently planning to do but you never know and um, but I feel like that, those will come really in handy and I'm looking forward to using those I also got myself a really lovely, I mean, it's just such a sweet little parcel, I will say. It came in a really pretty packaging outside of this as well. Some new hand stitch, hand sewing needles. So I am someone who, probably like many of us, I've just been using the hand sewing needles that come in like a little variety pack, a little circle variety pack, different sizes. They are not the highest quality. They are not the sharpest. Some of them actually kind of snag the fabric because it's not super smooth. And I've just been getting on with it and using them because I've had them and I didn't feel like I wanted to buy something new when I had something that basically worked. And I thought, you know what, if I can put it down as a gift, then that way I'm not spending the money on it, but I can still really enjoy my hand sewing a lot more. So these are Tulip brand. I think they're called Hiroshima needles. It basically, it just comes with a few different sizes. So this is number seven, number eight, and nine. I cannot tell you what those sizes mean, but I'm sure that's to do with the length and thickness of the needle. They are really pretty. They've got a little gold top on the top. I'm not sure if you're gonna really be able to see what they look like, but they come in this really cute little test tube with a little cork, but they are really lovely. I can see when I look at them, they are super smooth. They look really lovely and sharp. You can tell they're just gonna glide through the fabric and I know that they're gonna make my hand sewing just a really joyful joyful experience, or at least that's what I'm hoping. Um, but it'll be nice to see how those work, particularly on fine fabrics. I think it'll be really cool to have. I've also got a, a meta metallic? Metallic, magnetic is the word I was looking for. It is metallic, but a magnetic seam gauge. So this goes next to your sewing machine foot because it's magnetized it will stick to the foot of your sewing machine so that you can set it where you want your seam allowance to be i am usually putting a little piece of tape on on my sewing machine if it's not a 5 8 inch seam allowance because my brain usually assumes 5 8 because that's most of the patterns that i've sewn with previously so i'll usually put a little piece of washi tape down on my sewing machine just to remind myself if the seam allowance is different but I will say having that little line there that I can butt the fabric up against means that my seams will end up being a lot straighter. I know it will also come in handy for top stitching as well, but it will be something that will just make sure that when I am sewing, I can have that right where I want the seam allowance to be. I don't have to use my brain. I can then just stitch along using that as a guide and that'll be a little way to up my sewing game, hopefully in sort of projects to come. Another fun one that I got, and this is just, you cannot pick up on this on the screen, I know, but this is just so tactile and lovely and sweet. It is a little sewing gauge. So this came from Arrow Mountain. Arrow Mountain do lots of really cool handmade, hand carved buttons, and they do a lot of a little other haberdashery items as well. So this is one that is super sweet. It is made on bamboo, hand carved. I've got different markings for different things that I wanna use it for. So I will certainly use this for things like getting the hem turned up correctly, cause this is nice and thin. You can actually fold the fabric up over the edge to where you want the hem to be and actually iron or press over the top of it because the bamboo will be all right to take the heat. My normal sewing gauge, which is like the classic metal ones with a little plastic slider that goes up and down, 
I don't usually like to press on that. The metal part is fine, but there is that plastic slider and I worry about melting the plastic. But this, I don't have to worry about. I can just put it down on my fabric, fold it up to where I want to fold it, and then I can just press along there really nice and neatly. I've got imperial measurements going up and down. So it's got like um, one inch, half inch, one and a half inch, quarter inch, three eighths of an inch. And then I've also, along here, has got the um, metric measurements. So each little dash is a uh, centimeter. So that way you can, or millimeter, and you've got centimeters as well. So that depending on whatever your pattern is, you've basically got the perfect tool to measure exact measurements and seam allowance, or not seam allowance, sorry, sort of hem measurements and things like that. So this is a really sweet little object and I'm excited to have this. I've had a makeshift one that I've been using for ages, which is basically a piece of cardboard that I put some markings on. This is a step up from my little handmade one. So that's a, a cool little gift. I also got some Arrow Mountain buttons on the Arrow Mountain theme. Like I said, they do lots of really cool buttons. These ones, I don't know how easy it's gonna be for this to come across on camera, but they are silver metallic buttons. They've got a little crisscross. If I think it's not coming across, I might try and put some photos up. But they are um, sort of shiny silver in the background above an acrylic base and they are just going to be really fun and pop against whatever I use them for. I got a selection that I can use for sh some shirt making because I am planning to make some button down shirts and I think these would be a really cute um, button to use for those. I haven't decided yet which fabric or pattern I'm going to use but I thought I'll get a decent supply of them so that way I can use them and I feel like silver kind of goes with most of everything anyway so I feel like they should work for something quite easily. I also wanted to show you something that is not strictly a sewing item, but it's sewing related for sure. I got a puzzle from my husband. So this is actually, this image is upside down, but I'm holding it this way because that's the way the label is correct. But the image wants to actually look like this because that's how your thread is going to sit. But it is a jigsaw puzzle. It's a really nice little custom made. It was, they, they make them for you individually if you pick a design. It's from Zazzle. And they're really high quality puzzle. Some really interesting, unique, fun puzzle pieces as well. This is actually, it would, it's kind of the size and dimensions of a thousand piece jigsaw puzzle, but it's a thousand fourteen pieces and it ends up being 20 inch by 30 inch rectangle when it's made up. I'm actually decided to do a little giveaway on my Instagram. I'm going to be giving this puzzle to somebody else because I finished it. And once you finished a puzzle, it's still cool to make it again, but it's never quite the same as when you first made it. So I thought there are lots of people out there who I know do puzzles, who also sew, who might get a lot of joy out of this as well. So head over to my Instagram. I am at lostmythread if you're interested in possibly getting this puzzle for yourself or for somebody else. And I will ship it worldwide. If you want it, I will send it to you if you're gonna enjoy it. I would rather it go to somebody who's gonna get more out of it at this point. And then the final thing I wanna show you is one that I'm probably the most excited about and slightly scared about, but I'm not gonna be scared. I'm just gonna be brave and I'm gonna go for it. I got myself some fabric. It was actually, um, my husband got me this fabric. I have for years been wanting to make something from some Nani Eero fabric. A lot of you will be probably familiar with it. It's a Japanese fabric design company. It's actually, I think a part of, it's like a line from the Koka fabric, but they do quite a few different designs of fabric and they are generally very artistic, paintery kind of thing. I cannot remember the name of the artist who creates the fabric. I will put her name up when I can figure out what it is. But it is an artist who also designs textile and that really comes across to me in the fabric. They are like a work of art. And I didn't know if I would ever be able to get this fabric. I mean, of course, eventually, but it is not cheap. It is quite a special kind of fabric. It's, it costs quite a lot and for good reason. It's super high quality, really beautiful stuff. And I decided to go with a cotton, um, cotton sateen. So it's got a really nice little sheen to it. It's very lightweight, super delicate, really nice drape to it. And I will see how easily I can show you the fabric. Probably not very easily, but it's got really fantastic colors there. I'll probably try as well if I can stand up and show you what it looks like. But it is basically like a, it's an irregular design all over it. It is quite opaque. 
So I think it will work really well for most things. Try and bring it closer it's just to see if you can try and get some of that color. But I just love that overall kind of irregular design, those fantastic colors on there. So what my plans are, what I'm intending to do with this is I'm going to be making the blouse from the Breaking the Pattern book. It is a long sleeve blouse with like a cut open sleeve. If you follow the link on Instagram, you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about, but I think it will be really, really stunning in this fabric. This is definitely not a winter make, so I'm not gonna be making it tomorrow or anything like that. Probably more of a spring project or a summer project, so that's something to look out for. But I am so excited to finally have some Nanny Era fabric in my hands. I'm kind of shocked and excited and terrified all at the same time. So I think it'll be a really cool one to make up, and I think it was definitely a really nice, special Christmas present for me this year. So that's everything that I got for Christmas. I hope that you enjoyed hearing about those little goodies. I hope lots of you got some good sewing gifts as well. Let me know in the comments down below what you did get, if you got any fun little Christmas or sewing related things this year. And I hope to see you guys again before too long. As always, please do hit that like button if you enjoyed my video and subscribe if you wanna see more of it. And yeah, feel free to leave any comments, you know, positive, negative, always happy to receive. And yeah, see you guys soon. Bye.